What's up guys, I'm here today at Lee Cycle again and we're with our 2023 BMW S1000RR and we're here to answer a very important question. Two fuels keep on popping up in every conversation we have about racing and it's 2WL from Factory Fuels and it's gonna be MR12 by VP Racing. Now on the surface, both of these two fuels are very similar. They have same, almost the same gravities, same octane rating. There's a bunch of specs on that read exactly the same except for one major difference. VP MR12 is leaded, while 2WL is not leaded. And the differences between leaded and unleaded is pretty vast, to be honest with you. Even if all those specs are the same, leaded versus unleaded, leaded will always make more octane because lead itself in the engine is good for high compression. It's good for those engines. They actually used it in World War II for the P-51 Mustang to make more power. It's an incredible additive to fuel, but we've transitioned more over to the unleaded stuff. And that's what 2WL is doing. So we're here to compare because everyone says 2WL is comparative to VP MR12. Now, like I said, lead actually raises octane, so I don't want lead in the bike while I'm doing the testing with the other fuels or even deposits of, the, uh, of lead on top of the piston and the motor or anything that, like that where it could raise the octane of just regular fuels. So we're gonna test 91 first, we're gonna test 2WL second, and thirdly, we're gonna test the VP MR12. And today I have a helper with me because this is too much to do for me. I need to siphon these fuels out and do all this stuff. So I got behind the camera right now, Natalie. Let's say hi to Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hey. <laughs> I'll put her Instagram handle on here and everything for you guys so you want to check her out. So right now we're going to get the 91 baseline and after that we're going to siphon all the fuel out of it to so the point where this thing cannot start because all the comparisons I've seen with 2WL versus MR12, they're not siphoning the tank properly, at least not what I'm seeing. Maybe they are and I can't see it, but I'm going to do a proper test, meaning I'm going to take 91, we're doing the baseline now. We'll see how much the power it makes and I'll go over that with you guys. Do 2WL, see how much power that makes, and I'll go over with you guys. Now, between these, I'm siphoning the fuel completely out of the bike to the point it will not start anymore. Then I'll put the new fuel into it, and then I'll reset adaptations on top of that. I'm gonna reset fuel and knock on this bike to make sure we start from scratch. And then we're gonna keep on dynoing it until we repeat a number, and that's what we're gonna be going with as far as our peak number for that fuel. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, we're wrapped up with the 91 tuning. Let's check out the numbers here. So we've got a max peak of 190 wheel horsepower. You see right there. Now, normally I know you guys are saying, hey, this bike is supposed to make 200 wheel horsepower. Well, this is the difference between an 80 degree day and a 70 degree day. These bikes do not like IETs and it's not specific to BMW. That's all bikes. The hotter the temperature gets, the less number this is gonna read. And right there, we see it right there. 190 wheel horsepower is what we're baselining. And this is why we tell people it's so important to dyno same day, same strap, same air, same everything, because this is a 10 wheel horsepower difference here. If we look here at an old run file, you can see this is the same bike, same exact everything. Look at that. That's how big the difference is when we have IETs and we're dealing with better air, better everything. Same bike, this is the same bike, same mod, same everything, except a different day. That's it. Now it's time to siphon everything out of this bike. We'll get the 91 out of here and we're gonna put the 2WL in. And there we go. We are siphoning out the 91 right now. We're gonna wait until this thing is completely clear and then I'm gonna even try to start it and make sure it does not start anymore. That's how clear this thing is gonna be in 91. All right, now we've completely drained the tank. Let's go ahead and see if she fires up. We'll know if it fires up, that means it's not drained. If it doesn't fire up, it's drained. Go ahead. Try it again. Oh yeah, she's done. There's that, that pump is dry. So now we're gonna put the 2W on because this is a true comparison. I'm gonna reset adaptations. All right, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and go and reset the adaptations for the fuel and knock. That'll give us a true zero. And the Wi-Fi strength here isn't the greatest, so I gotta work around it. All right, so there's knock sensors. Off. On. Okay, now the reset, now the fuel mixture and the knock sensors are reset now. Now we can get some pulls in.
Uh, you can see how this tire is reacting all those runs. <laughs> it's starting to get nice and toasty. All right, so we've got good numbers here. We've got 190 versus 193 on the final pass. Let me actually, I, know, I think I saw it do 194. So that's four wheel horsepower more than 91 pump. And you can see right here, we're getting gains across the entire board, which is pretty normal for a race gas. I mean, if we're talking, what well, we're getting the mid range here, about 8,000 RPM or so. The cursor will actually move, there it goes. Okay, we are making six wheel horsepower right there and four wheel torque. Those are really good gains, honestly, right there in the mid range. And we're making gains across the entire board, including the top end. So this overall is a better fuel than 91 pump. It, that's not a surprise to anyone, that's, that's as expected. At the last pass here, you can see we've made 193, but pretty much the same returns we get for every single pass. Now that's pretty interesting. Now uh, keep in mind, this is an unleaded fuel, but everything else is about the same as MR12. Now lead is a huge factor in octane. That's something we need to consider here. Now there also are drawbacks with MR12, and I'll go over those in a little bit here after we do the fuel, but for now, let's go ahead and get this tank, let's get this tank drained, and let's get some MR12 in there and reset ad apps. I think we got a drain. Let's do a test fire real quick. Make sure she's completely empty. Okay, go ahead and try fire again. Try fire again. She's dead. with the Jesus juice in here. Put about a gallon again. Okay, so we got the MR12 in there. We're resetting the adapts just like we did the first time. All right, we're good to go. Good for testing, MR12, let's do it. All right, we're done with our final testing with Natalie. Thanks again for operating the dyno, and we're gonna see what those numbers are. Check out MR12 and what she did here. We got 197.8 and 91 torque, and you can see that curve looks very nice. Now, if we're gonna go for the best 2WL run we got there, which is at 194, you can see where MR12 comes above the 2WL. Now, of course, MR12 is in red, 2WL is in blue, and we're making gains everywhere. We're talking three-wheel horsepower here, a one-wheel torque there, which is nominal. Um, but even through here, through that dip, we're talking about four-wheel horsepower, two-wheel torque and at the top here, which is where everyone's racing these things. If you're using MR12, 2WL, you're probably right around this RPM range of the 10 to 14. That's where we're making the significant gains of 88 to 93. And from torque, we're making two-wheel torque there. So impressive gains from 2WL, but also more impressive gains from MR12, which is exactly what I expected from MR12. I never expected 2WL to beat MR12 simply for the leaded factor. Now, there are caveats that come with MR12. First of all, with MR12, it hates heat. That's why when I tell people to run MR12, you wanna make sure the fuel's in the shade, put ice around the can. I mean, do whatever you can to keep that thing cold because it needs to be cold, but once it's cold, it performs amazingly. So that's one caveat. Vapor lock is another caveat to MR12. Also, the fuel, the actual lead in the fuel will actually make, leave deposits on the pistons in the engine. It'll start making pits. And it'll start turning your exhaust white. You see right there, exhaust white, that's lead that's in the exhaust right there that's coming out. So there are caveats to it, but the gains are you make amazing horsepower right there. You just gotta know what you're dealing with. Now, if we're gonna talk about price, the price here for the 2WL is about $33 a gallon. MR12, I actually went and bought this. Now, it used to be about $300 for the can, but this time it was about the same as this when I went and bought it. So they changed their pricing recently. It was about $33 a gallon as well for the MR12. So those are the two comparisons for the two fuels there. And of course, over that 91 pass, it's almost laughable. So let's go ahead and do a clean sweep here and show you the best of all three. So you got the best run here of MR12. 
best run here of 2WL, and the best run here of 91. Now, of course, those are huge gains. We go from 190 to 187, that's massive, especially on a day that's over 90 degrees. But you can see the gains and how much we're pulling from MR12 to pump fuel. That's a ridiculous gain we're talking right there. Of course, we're saying red is gonna be MR12, blue is 2WL, and green is 91 pump fuel. And right here in the mid range, we're talking 159 to 168. That's almost 10 wheel horsepower difference, guys. And on the torque here, we're talking 90 from 86. Now that's four wheel torque. Now that's also impressive. This is stuff you feel, and that's about 10,000 RPM. We're talking even more up here. So this is a very impressive fuel here for MR12. Now with MR12, we've actually had world record bikes, meaning world record super stock with our tuning, meaning the fastest in the world is a BMW S1000RR with our tuning and MR12, 170 mile per hour trap. I mean, that is ridiculous on a stock wheelbase setup. Another thing I forgot to mention here is how fresh we need the fuels. Now, both these cans were open today. Now, both of these cans are also oxygenated. Now, oxygenated fuel means it needs to be fresh. The longer you keep it open, the longer it breathes, the more power you're losing. And even just putting the tap on the can like that will preserve it for a little bit, but it's not still gonna keep that entire freshness. And it even has a shelf life if you buy this just as it is now and leave it just sitting around for six months, it'll start losing its potency as well. So you wanna make sure when you buy fuels like this, you use them almost immediately or pretty close to when you bought them. Now we've talked about the fuels, let's talk about the mapping. I didn't change the mapping on this bike at all. As far as what it rode in on and what it's leaving on, it's the exact same mapping from BT Moto the entire time. We didn't change anything. The only thing I did, like I said, was we drained the fuel completely, added new fuel back into it, and reset it adaptation so to get a true level of exactly how much power each fuel is making. The way BT Moto does this is it targets a lambda value from the exhaust sensors on the bike. So as long as you leave the exhaust sensors in your exhaust, you'll get what we call full-time closed loop. Now, the bike does this stock partially, meaning sometimes at, at, at partial throttle and idle, it will do full-time closed loop or it will do closed loop. We enable it for full-time at a specific lambda value that we target. Now, when it targets that lambda value and I put different fuels in it, it's gonna change a little bit, but the actual AFR changes with it. That's the best part about this. On top of that, how do we make power? How do we just put a fuel in there and how does the bike know how to make power, right? Well, we also have adaptive ignition on these bikes. Now that comes stock. Now, of course, we augment it to maximize it for the fuels that we're using today. But even stock, if you put a little bit of MR12 in here, you're gonna feel a little more pep coming out of the bike. Now, it won't be the significant gains you see now without our mapping, but with our mapping, we take a higher value of the ignition mapping and change the target ignition on it. If the bike sees no knock at a certain ignition map, it will keep that ignition map. Now, if the bike sees knock, it goes to a lower ignition map. And we've also built into the mapping, which a lot of people didn't do or don't do, is safety. So if you put bad fuel in here, let's say you actually put 87 in here one time, the bike's gonna feel like a dog, but it ain't gonna be knocking either. That's the thing, because it'll detect knock, it'll start going to a lower and lower and lower ignition map to run to that safe point or emergency mapping at that point. Now, the adaptive ignition mapping isn't anything new, like I said, that comes on BMW, but the full-time closed loop is something a lot of people claim but no one can do. And actually some people claim, hey, the bike does this stock. It does to a certain extent, but it does not do it full time, especially wide open throttle does not do it, but it does it with the BT Moto mapping. And that is exclusive to BT Moto. All right, so now we've covered everything. I think that's gonna do it for our testing. Again, like we said, 91 is gonna be, well, that was our baseline. 2WL, great fuel, nothing wrong with it. I see everyone beating their chest about 2WL. It's just good as MR12. It is not just as good as MR12. You saw it making half the power or half the gain that the MR12 did from 184 to that 187. MR12 being the king, but of course there are caveats on there as well. So I think that's gonna do it for today. And thank you to our dyno operator, Natalie. Say bye, Natalie. Bye. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one.